Visit to the Blessed Sacrament from the writings of St. Peter Julian Amard, the cultus of the Eucharist, continued. Our Lord is in the Blessed Sacrament to receive from men the same homage he received from those who had the happiness of coming close to him during his mortal life. He is there to give everybody the opportunity of offering a personal homage to his sacred humanity. Were this the only reason for the Eucharist, it should make us very happy. For the Eucharist enables us as Christians to pay our respects to our Lord in person. This presence is the justification of public worship as well as the life of it. If you take away the real presence, how will you be able to pay to his most sacred humanity the respect and honor which are its due? As man, our Lord is present only in heaven and in the most blessed sacrament. Through the Eucharist, we can draw near to the living Savior Savior in person and see him and converse with him. Without this presence, divine worship becomes an abstraction. Through this presence, we go straight to God and approach him as during his mortal life. How unfortunate it would be if, In order to honor the humanity of Jesus Christ, we were obliged to go back 18 centuries. That is all very well for the mind, but how pay an outward homage to so distant a past? We would content ourselves with giving thanks for the mysteries without actively participating in them. But with the Eucharist, we can actually come and adore him like the shepherds. We can prostrate ourselves before him like the Magi. We need no longer regret our not having been present at Bethlehem or on Calvary. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. Spiritual communion. I, my Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as one who has already come and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Visit to the Blessed Virgin Mary from the Imitation of Mary. Fervor in God's service, Mary speaks. My child, a heart that loves God neglects nothing it can do to please him. You have little realization of how much the Lord deserves your service if you are unwilling to put yourself out for him. Consider how much those who declare themselves followers of the world are willing to do for their master and learn from them what you should be willing to do for the Lord. See how concerned they are. They spare themselves neither suffering nor weariness in serving the world, and, only to please it, condemn themselves to a thousand forms of subjection. Yet you find it too heavy a burden to please God and give this sovereign master proofs of your love. To ask you to be attentive to his will is to ask of you a submission that is too great. Do you not find it humiliating that I am forced to call your attention to the example of worldlings and to send you to school with them in order to learn how to serve God? Let not the children of this world outstrip you in generosity and let the world not boast that it is better served by its followers than the God of Christians is by those who claim to belong to him. Stop being one of those Christians who, thinks, who think themselves very devout if they do exactly what the law prescribes and under threat of punishment. These people give the impression that they would easily consent to losing God's grace if they could do it without risk of punishment. They fear God rather than love him. The prayer on the feast day of the Immaculate Heart of Mary.
O Immaculate Heart of Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, most lovable heart, object of pleasure of the adorable Trinity and worthy of all the veneration and tenderness of the angels and of men, heart which is the most similar to that of Jesus, of whom you are the perfect image, heart full of goodness and so compassionate with regard to our miseries, deign to melt the ice of our hearts and grant that they may be entirely turned to the heart of the divine Savior. Infuse in them the love of your virtues. Inflame them with that fire with which you are continually burning. Enclose within you the Holy Church, guard it and be always its sweet exile and its incorruptible tower against every incursion of its enemies. Be our way to go to Jesus and the canal through which we may receive all the graces necessary for our salvation. Assist us in our needs. Be our relief in times of affliction our comfort in temptations, our refuge in persecutions, our help in all dangers, but especially in the last battle of our life, the moment of our death, when all hell will be let loose against us to steal our souls in that formidable, in that formidable moment at that terrible point upon which depends our eternity. Then, O Most Holy Virgin, let us feel the sweetness of your maternal heart and the strength of your power before that of Jesus, with the opening for us of a sure refuge in the fount of mercy, so that we may come to bless him with you in paradise for all eternity. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Sweetheart of Mary, be the salvation of our souls. The th 13 days in preparation for the feast of St. Anthony of Padua, the eighth day. O oh, great saint, a thousand dangers of soul and body surround us. We are never secure and live ever fearfully and uncertain about our future. Preserve us from every danger and be Preserve us from every danger and from every evil now and forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua.